Hey guys, what's up? It's Alex or Nuznuz here, and welcome to my 1 to 99 and 120 magic guide for RuneScape 3. Now, this guide is going to aim to tell you everything you need to know about the magic skill. I'm going to talk about how magic works, the best ways to train it to level 99 and beyond. If you use 99 guides and want to progress your account for PVM, make sure you subscribe right now so you don't miss another video. And now we're going to start off with the basics. So firstly, we're going to look at why you should train magic in RuneScape 3 at all. So magic is a skill, a combat style, that is one of the most widely used combat styles for PVM, bossing, and slayer. And whether you're on a budget or have max gear, it's going to be amazing for almost all combat scenarios. It is also very useful because of the unique spells it can bring you that are useful even when using other combat styles, and also it's useful for skilling, questing, clue scrolls, teleporting around the game, and much much more. When training magic there are a ton of notable items and unlocks that you can use since it is a combat style of course, so there's many many buffs that apply to magic, too many to list every single one, but I will list some of the ones that I find most important. So you can notably use a rune pouch or grasping pouch to hold runes for you. This will save you a lot of inventory space when training and generally is a very good thing to have using magic, although it can be pretty pricey so you usually won't get this until you're doing higher level stuff. Now the Vecna Skull is a cheap way to boost your magic level, which boosts it by 2 plus 10% of your magic level rounded down. So magic boosting potions like super magics, extreme magics, and overloads do basically the same thing, but if you you don't have those, the Vecna Skull can be a nice lower level way, a cheaper way to boost your magic up. You can also use Torstal Incense Sticks to increase your basic speed gain up to a maximum of 2% when using them at max potency. And most combat support skills like Prayer, Herblore, Summoning, uh, Invention, Archaeology are all very very important to help you get the most out of the magic skill. Now a lot of auras can also be used in conjunction with magic to do more damage or make magic Magic all around just better to train with or PVM with. Now the runic accuracy aura will increase your magic accuracy. The maniacal aura is amazing for DPS using magic, but it's mostly used for bossing uh, since you take more damage. Um, this isn't one that you're going to use a lot for training. The dark magic aura is nice for inflicting damage over time. And then you have vampirism and penance aura, which can be used in conjunction while training to either heal more from your damage or to maintain prayer as your damage. So these are all very good choices in auras to support your magic training. So in terms of quests for magic XP, quests that will give you decent XP at lower levels is most notably Evil Dave's Big Day Out, which will give you 50k magic XP. Then you have the Watchtower quest can give you 15.2k magic XP. As for the really, really early quests, you have the Grand Tree, Imp Catcher, and Vampire Slayer can give you some good early XP as well. Although magic is pretty easy to train in the early levels, so it's not like you need to do these quests like you would a skill like Agility. Now as for notable unlocks, we're going to talk about Spellbook more in depth later, but quest unlocks that are useful is the Ancient Spellbook, which can be unlocked from the Desert Treasure Quest, the Lunar Spellbook, which can be unlocked from completing Lunar Diplomacy, which unlocks you more spells after completing Dream Mentor as well. Then we have Saren Spells, which can be unlocked after completing the Light Within Quest, which are added to the Ancient Spellbook. Then you have four new Ancient Spells, which are unlocked after the City of Sentizen Quest. And then completing the Livid Farm minigame can also unlock you some very worthwhile spells. So there's a huge amount of spells that can be unlocked via quests. So when it comes to the magic style, now we're going to go over the basics and mechanics of it. So when it comes to this, there are two forms of weapons, wands and orbs or books, and then two-handed weapons like staffs. So staffs are two-handed weapons that are slower but can use abilities like Sonic Wave, Magma Tempest, and staffs commonly have runic properties giving you unlimited runes, like an elemental battle staff for instance gives you unlimited elemental runes which can be very useful. Wands can be used with an orb or a book or some offhand, creating a dual wield combination which these combos have higher attack speeds and can be used with very powerful abilities like concentrated blast. Quickly here I'm going to give a brief rundown on some more powerful or common abilities for magic. So for two-handed weapons, Sonic Wave is what you'll be using as one of your main basic abilities. And then Concentrated Blast, or alternatively, Greater Concentrated Blast, is a much, much more powerful ability, which you'll be using with Dual Wield, which is what makes it so good. Dragon Breath, Combust, and Corruption Blast are all very good basics that you'll be using a ton. As for thresholds, your main ones are probably going to be Wild Magic and Asphyxiate. And then for ultimate abilities, Sunshine, 
Sunshine will be your main ultimate, with Tsunami and Omni Power having uses later on. I'll link a full ability guide where I showcase some of these more powerful abilities for you to look at, so next we're going to go over some examples of revolution bars for trading magic. The RuneScape wiki actually has a great page available with revolution bars based on what you have unlocked. So instead of showing you a bar for just one thing, it really depends on what you're doing and what you have unlocked. Some bars are better for AoE while some are better for bossing. The link will be in the description so you can tailor your bars exactly how you like because it's going to be different for everybody. So here's an example of some gear setups based on the point of the game you're in. In terms of weapons, there's actually quite a few cheaper options you can get or unlock absolutely for free. Chaotics are always a great option later on if you have the Dungeoneering level, and I'll talk about a few early game weapons that you can get to start off with a little bit later once we start the leveling section. So now we're going to finally move on into these training methods. These are combat methods and that's how people mostly train up magic and then later I'll talk about a bunch of alternatives that can make you money or just to switch it up if you don't want to do combat the entire time. So before we start with the leveling, one more item I just have to talk about here is you can get faster XP basically in the later levels and that's the Scrimshaw of Sacrifice. Now this Scrimshaw can be purchased for 2.3 mil each on the GE and it basically gives you 50% extra combat XP when killing monsters. It'll also give you Slayer XP too if you're on a task, so you can use this to level up much faster when fighting monsters, but you will not receive any drops from those monsters except secondary drops, so make sure you know that. And this is kind of expensive, it's like 2.3 mil or might even buy for more, um, and that's for one hour. Uh, but if you want the absolute fastest XP, it's worth looking into, especially on the later methods. So first at level 1, you're going to want to go into your combat combat settings. Now this is where you can choose if you want to level up magic on its own or you can pair it with defense. Now if you choose both, you're going to be splitting your XP between magic and defense during combat. So if you want to level up both, albeit a little bit slower, you can do that. However for this video, I'll just be using magic. Now I created a fresh account to test out this entire guide basically in this video that I'll be using throughout and a super easy way to get a starting weapon when you're, you know, first starting. If you're a member, you probably already have oddments from spinning your daily keys. If you don't, you can just spin a few of them and convert them to oddments, and you can buy the Imkondo Channeling Rod in the oddment store. Now, surprisingly, this weapon scales all the way up to level 70. It's a dual wield, which is nice because you can use Concentrated Blast, and it's kind of very overpowered for something that costs so little oddments. But if you can't get this, you can also get a Starting Staff of Air very, very commonly from basically killing any low-level mob like cows or farmers. They're made to drop super fast if you don't own one already. Now for the actual leveling from level 1 to 30, there's such a wide variety of ways to get started, but the easiest ways are to go and kill trolls or kill chickens. Now trolls are located in Berthorpe where you spawn after completing the tutorial, and these are quite easy to kill and AoE down. You can also go to the trusty chicken farm wherever you want, Lumbridge, and do this quite easily too. I think it only took me like 20 minutes or so to level up to 30 magic maybe a tad bit longer. And also something, if you're at chickens or you go to like cows, you can aggro pot to make them aggressive and you can essentially AFK if you want to, uh, to you know, make this a little more AFK friendly. You're kind of going to be killing them a little bit slower because they take a little bit to aggro rather than going and clicking on all of them. So it will be a little bit slower, but more AFK if you have the money. But, you know, it just depends what you want to do. You may also just get this level off quests like the Grand Tree or those lower level quests. So anyway, you decide to get 30. You can't really be wrong here. They're going to be fast no matter what. So from levels 30 to 45, the easiest and quickest method is actually doing the Evil Dave's Big Day Out quest. Now I'll provide an alternative, but this method is just super overpowered. So to do this, you just do Evil Dave's Big Day Out. You need 30 agility, 30 cooking, 30 herbler, and 30 magic. And you need a few quests in the Evil Dave storyline like freeing Evil Dave, Gertrude's Cat, Shadow of the Storm, but it's not too crazy of requirements whatsoever. It's actually uh, very 
very tame in requirements for what you get in XP. So at the end, you're going to get like a lot of Herbler and Agility XP, but you're going to get 50,000 Magic XP. And this 50,000 Magic XP is going to send you from level 30 all the way over level 45 Magic. So you can essentially skip this whole next portion just by doing this quest. But if you for some reason don't want to do this, which I would recommend you do it because it's actually overpowered for a quest, um, I will provide a method next. So if you don't want to do the quest, you can go to Ice Warriors. Now you can start here at level 30. Uh, it becomes much easier at level 35 because at level 35 you can actually use uh, a fire spell. So you're going to want to use the fire bolt spell at level 35 and this will allow you to kill them much faster. You can also pot up with a magic potion if you want uh, to train there earlier. But going here you can kill these pretty quickly. They are aggressive which sucks and there are ice giants in there so you will need food prayer does help but if you have any semblance of you know okay gear if you have protection prayers it's gonna be pretty easy you're gonna get decent xp here like i said evil dave's big day out is much better but if you really don't want to do that this is another option too so now that you're level 45 there's a few different ways you can go about getting to around 60 magic so the first way is going to be ghouls now you can kill ghouls in canifis they give around 138 xp each and they're not too hard to kill now if you don't have you know a full setup if you don't have um, a good weapon or maybe you're using a weapon lower than your tier using an accuracy order kit or it can definitely speed up your kills per hour as well as using like magic potions, Vecna skull, stuff like that. Um, but all in all, ghouls are decent to start training at level 45. You can actually find a place to safe spot these if you want. However, it is kind of annoying. If you want to, you can go in and try to AFK. Now you are going to get hit quite a bit if you're if you're just trying to afk with like an aggression potion or just not an aggression potion because usually at your level these are going to be aggressive to you and you can pray melee that's what i was doing and i just had a bunch of aoe abilities and i was essentially just sitting there looking over making sure i restore my health and prayer when i need and then banking after i ran out of supplies and going back and it was fairly good xp this is one option you can do to get to level 60 magic now something else you can do is you can go to crocodiles now these are located in the desert and they're southwest of Polnavich, and they're actually very easy to kill they have uh, a good amount of xp definitely more than ghouls but they do take a little bit longer to kill these are going to get you decent xp as well you need to bring of course like your water skins and stuff so you don't die of desert heat uh, they're weak to air spells so you're going to want to use air spells there but these are a solid method as well. Getting to 60 is kind of the main goal. And then once you're there, we move into the, you know, the big boy methods to get a lot of XP. So doing these crocodiles or ghouls or the next method I'm going to talk about is basically just getting us to that point. Now one final method if you don't if you're tired of killing ghouls, you're tired of killing crocodiles, you can spend a little bit more money and use Camelot Teleport at level 45. You just want a staff of air and you'll need law runes and you basically just spam the teleport and you can actually get up to like 100k XP per hour doing this if you cast fast enough. Now this is expensive more expensive than just training but it does give a nice way without having to deal with combat to get a very good amount of xp per hour so if you're tired of the other stuff this could be a method for you to get all the way to level 60. Now from here on out is where it gets interesting because there's not one right way to train magic. It's honestly at this point that you have a ton of options. You can basically do anything. For instance, for me, I think I did Slayer to 99 magic and then I bossed almost until 200 mil magic XP. I didn't really do a method and just camp it. However, if you do want to do that, you can do something like the Abyss. Now, the Abyss is something that you can go at around. I would recommend having 60 plus magic. Um, also having, you know, a little bit of defense some you know armor uh, an okay setup because you're not going to want to go here with like no armor and a gothic staff but you just have to complete the enter the abyss mini quest and then you can go here 
and these are aggressive and essentially you can kind of just afk here with aoe abilities if you're a lower level it might be a little harder you might get hit more you can pray melee you can also bring food as well maybe like a bunyip or a familiar that's going to heal you but you can essentially stay here as long as you want you're going to get really really good xp here there are a few spots that uh, the abyss monsters just bundle up and you just aoe them down for tons and tons of xp so if you are someone who maybe it's double xp maybe you just want to power level up using the scrimshaw of sacrifice here as well is very good you can just power level up really really fast so this is another great method that's pretty widely known and been very good for many many years so a great way to go to level 99 that I'm sure a lot of you did on Fresh Start Worlds is doing Elite Dungeon 3 or the Shadow Reef. Now this you can technically start at lower levels like level 60. However, it's going to be kind of hard to solo at this level. You're going to be getting hit an absolute ton, but it is definitely possible and the XP rates are absolutely insane. 1 mil, 2 mil XP per hour, very, very easily. More if you're using like a scrimshaw of aggression or scrimshaw of sacrifice, you can get a ton of XP here. And I will leave a link to a lower level run guide that I found that's really, really good and shows you like exactly where to stand and stuff. So if you're wanting to try this solo at a lower level, now if you go with people, even if you're lower level, you guys should still be able to easily do this. Of course, you're gonna need food, you're gonna get hit quite a bit, but you can start this basically as early as you can survive if you have like 70 80 magic it's going to be much easier and you can probably solo uh, relatively easily and you're basically going through uh, the shadow reef to a certain extent killing the trash mobs we all know about ed3 trash mob running it used to be even better uh, gp per hour but the xp is still absolutely insane especially if you use all the buffs so uh this is one of the absolute best ways to get to 99 magic or even beyond so I would highly recommend this and don't forget to check that link in the description as well so I'm just gonna mention this here and it seems pretty obvious but training as in bossing instead of actually power leveling from like 80 plus magic so even if you start at God Wars 1 you can get a really decent amount of XP per hour and the reason I like bossing for leveling from you know 80 90 plus magic especially if you're already 99 and you're going for like 120 the reason i like bossing so much is because it doesn't feel like you're actually training you're more, more focused on trying to get drops complete boss logs that you don't really even you know think about the xp but the xp will come and bosses are actually a very decent xp so that and slayer very good things if you don't want to follow these strict methods to getting up the higher levels so I just wanted to mention here a few other things. I don't want this video to be like an hour long. So these are like some optional things you can think about. Abyssal demons are very good. Corrupted creatures are very good. Basically anything Slayer related that you can mage, that you can kill quite a few few per hour is going to be very nice. I also wanted to talk about Shattered Worlds because not only can you train up your magic or whatever combat style there, but you can also level up items for invention pretty fast there. So if you're looking to train invention while also training combat, Shattered Worlds is a very good choice too. And now I'm going to talk about the methods you can do above 99. All of these still apply, trash runs, bossing. That's how most people go above 99 magic, but there's one specifically that got me a ton of XP that I'm going to talk about now. Now for the really high levels for like leveling to 120, something that got me a huge amount of XP was I actually killed the Magister for tons of XP. So the Magister, you need level 115 Slayer. It is a boss. You will be using keys to the crossing. You will need to spend a little money on him, but you will make profit in the long run. I made a ton of profit there. And essentially the Magister gives a 30.5k XP per kill. And if you have a Slayer Task 2, you're going to get 8,000 XP per kill. So very, very huge amount of XP every single kill. And you can kill him quite fast once you get the hang of it. So if you're getting, for instance, 60 kills per hour, which is definitely possible here, um, you can get over 1 million combat XP per hour. So for instance, 1 million magic XP. And you can also make a decent amount of money like 15 to 20 mil gp profit per hour too i have over 3,000 magister kills this is essentially i bet i i'm not sure how much xp that is that's like 
Well, now that I actually look at it, I have gained 100 million magic XP at the Magister in my time. So the Magister can make you good money and you can get an absolute ton of XP and it won't even feel like you're training because you're bossing trying to get rare drops and stuff like that. So one of the reasons I definitely recommend bossing in any facet for going above level 99 magic. So now let's move on to some profitable methods. Magic can actually make you a decent profit in a lot of different ways. So if you want to make some cash without doing combat, but also training up your magic level at the same time, these could be some good options for you. First, we're going to start off with the Magic Training Arena, which is located in Alcrid, and it's basically a very, very old minigame that you can train magic at. Now, this involves doing things like alchemy, telekinetic grab, enchanting, and more. There's four different rooms. You can start training here pretty early if you'd like. You only need level 33 magic, which allows you to use things like telekinetic grab, but also low alchemy and the lower tier enchant spells. However, your GB per hour and points per hour is going to be much less as well as your XP so I'd recommend that you wait until level 57 magic because then you can use the level 4 enchant spell and also use high alchemy which not only will increase your GP but also your XP. Now I won't explain how to do every room here because it would be a whole 20 minute video but I do have a video where I test out the arena and talk about each room and I'll link that below as well in the description. But it took me 90 minutes to get enough points from this place to buy infinity boots which are the best thing to buy for profit which comes out to around 13 million GP made per hour. Now you're not going to spend much in runes as you're mostly using laws, cosmics, and natures and you're not using any of the super expensive runes like blood or elemental runes. Now each room is different for XP rates, but for instance the alchemy room, you're going to look at around 75 to 100k XP per hour there depending how fast you are, while other rooms like the maze room depend much more on your speed, but realistically this place is at least 50 to 100k XP per hour, even more if you're using the higher level spells, and you can very easily make around 10 mil plus GP per hour here, if not upwards of 15 mil per hour if you really know how to do each room. Maybe not something that you want to grind for 100 hours, but if you need a change in training and just want to make a little bit of money, this place could definitely be for you. Another way to make some decently AFK money while training magic is making teleport tablets. Now you can start this out pretty early, as early as level 25 magic. You do need soft clay and law runes, and then you also need a lectern in your house, so level 40 construction at minimum, up to level 67 depending on the tabs you're making. An elemental battle staff to have unlimited runes is also useful, or just the elemental staff of the other runes you need. Uh, a butler also is very good for not having to bank, of course. So depending on the tablet you're making, at the lowest level you can make the Varrock tabs for around 2 mil profit per hour and 30k magic XP decently AFK up to all the way to 3 million GP per hour and upwards of 50 plus K XP per hour making Ardoin tablets or Watchtower tablets. So it's another great option for making a bit of cash, kind of AFK, non-combat method, just an all around good thing you can do too. Now at level 80 plus magic, you can also start stringing amulets and you can get upwards of 175 to 200 K XP per hour. Uh, make sure to check the profit margins. For instance, diamond amulets can make you like 2 mil GP per hour profit, but some amulets lose money, so you want to check that first. You need astral runes, and you need the lunar diplomacy quest for the lunar spellbook, of course, and then you just use the string jewelry spell on the unstrung amulets, and you get a pretty decent amount of, of XP and maybe a little bit of profit, and it's not too bad for a non-combat method. Now another higher level method that can actually make you very good money and very good XP is killing the Glace or Slayer creature. I've talked about these in a video before and since the Armadillo Battle Staff is so high in price now, camping these is going to make you a ton of money. On average, you're going to make from 15 to 20 mil per hour in the long run from just getting the Shards of Armadillo. You don't have to rely on a super rare drop. In terms of XP, you can get upwards of 350 to 450k magic XP be per hour from here. You should probably have, of course, the Ritual of the Majorat quest done, but I would recommend having like Soul Split and like 80 plus magic tier 80 uh, fire spells, of course. Uh, but yeah, this is another great option that is very decent magic XP, but also very good money. So now I quickly want to go over the spell books. There are 
different spell books in runescape and different types of spells and sometimes they can get confusing because there's quite a bit so i'm going to go over some notable ones so first we have the normal spell book this is where you're going to have your elemental attacks like fire wave air wave etc this is where you're going to have most of your teleports your high alchemy your enchant jewelry all the things you remember from the original runescape this is great when you're first starting training great for teleporting around basically just the default but we also have the Lunar Spellbook. I'm sure most of you remember the Lunar Spellbook. It can be gotten from doing the Lunar Diplomacy quest, and more spells can be gotten from doing the Dream Mentor quest as well. Now in here you're going to find things that can be used with skilling to kind of train like plank make, bake pie, string jewelry, a lot of different spells that can actually make you a little bit of profit and also get you decent XP. These, these are mostly like processing spells. There were more spells added recently as of like a year and a half ago like telekinetic grind which can grind up things like goat horn dust. Um, you have sift soil which can sift archaeology soil and then of course you have have like vengeance and all the lunar spells we've come to know and then we have the ancient spellbook which can be used after doing the desert treasure quest now the ancient spellbook can be furthered upon by getting the centesian spells uh, after doing the city of centesian quest which gives you a bunch more spells now the ancient spellbook essentially has everything you know and remember like blood burst blood barrage ice barrage the classic spells it also has things like intercept which you can intercept somebody on your team and barricade essentially uh you know keeping them from harm you can do the same with like devotion stuff you basically place a ward on an ally and you'll take all the damage that they would take uh, with a five percent reduction so that's a spell that's used in group pvm a lot you have stuff like the prism so for instance the prism of restoration can heal your familiar when it's near so for if you're using like a hellhound or a blood reaver this is also very good shield dome you can create an energy shield this can be good to reduce damage from huge attacks like telus is so much power the ancient spellbook also has notable skilling spells like crystal mask which is used at a place like croesus uh, it is also used when pickpocketing along with like the light form prayer you of course have crystallize which can target trees and mining spots and fishing spots and can increase your xp but you don't get any resources this is used a lot in power leveling for skilling so there's a ton of spells here in the ancient spellbook that are very useful and even furthered upon by getting the centesian spells now the centesian spells most notably you have like exanginate and insight fear which are very powerful spells for combat but one of the ones that's most game changing is called animate dead and if you're using tank gear you basically gain 33 percent of your defense level as a flat damage reduction you gain 10 percent of its armor as a flat damage reduction so this paired with like crit bloom or tank gear is makes mage so so tanky so animate dead is a huge spell also smoke cloud uh, you disorient your target it's kind of like vulnerability and this will increase the target's damage received from crits by 15 percent so another big spell to be aware of here too there are a ton of spells and i can't go through every single one here but i wanted to list some of the notable ones so if you're new you know to pvm on runescape 3 or just new to the game in general you kind of get a what's what on kind of some of the new spells that came out that are really nice in the game but yeah i hope this guide helped you out make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more guides just like this if it did also if you want that link to me testing the magic training arena and everything i did during it you can click this button right on the right side of the screen you can see the video there and yeah thank you guys subscribe for more videos like this and i'll see you in the next one